Welcome everybody. Tonight, the business topic is get out of your own way. Now, Jade, she's not able to join us tonight um, because she's um, traveling and she's in Ohio actually, teaching a lot of classes as, as we speak. She's meeting with people and doing some training as well. But she's recorded a message for us and um, she's put together, she's put a lot of time into this. Actually, this took a lot of her time. Um, this is an awesome message. Um, getting out of your own, own way means that a lot of people, the things that stop them are basically their own bad habits, their um, beliefs or, or stuff like that. So some one of the things that she did to prepare for this topic tonight was that she um, messaged a lot of uh, key leaders in our team and, and other people that we know um, to ask them questions. We're going to, she's going to go down, go through those at the end. Um, and she's got uh, 10 areas, 10 false beliefs. Um, and she, she gathered data from everybody and, and came up with some, um, some solutions and everything for all of us. So uh, without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and introduce Jade, our speaker. <laughs> That's kind of funny. Um, here she is um, joining us from cyberspace uh, via QuickTime Player. <laughs> and we'll just go ahead and right. pause her. Hi, guys. Hi, Jade. I think I'm recording now. No, you're okay, recording. I already started. It. <laughs> uh, okay. So hi guys, I won't be here uh, for this class this week, so I thought I'll record it, pre-record it for you. So what we'll do is we'll just go through this and we'll stop at, at different points along the way and have a discussion. Because this is a very imp important topic. Before I go on, can everybody hear that? Yes. Yep. Okay. Um, to, to share with everybody. So we have a lot of people that want to do doTERRA as a business mm -hmm. and there's a lot of people that succeed and a lot of people that are equally capable, they don't succeed. And the reason is, one of the main causes is that they are being um, the biggest obstacle uh, to their success. And uh, we want to share with you some of the ways that you can overcome this so that you can move forward and just be successful like everybody else, okay? So I know from experience that I can be my biggest obstacle. So um, hopefully what we share with you today, what, um, what I'm sharing with you today will help you, okay? So let's get on with this. As, as you can see on the screen, there's a lot of notes, and so I'm going to go through it and read it with you and um, just to uh, explain a little bit about uh, what we have here. All right, so... And, and if anybody has any questions, uh, feel free to stop it and we'll, we'll make this an interactive thing. We'll get through as much as we can. I want to share with you some of the reasons why I believe we get in our way. Okay, and hopefully it will help you the way it has helped me. And, um, you know, remember what you learn here will mean nothing if you don't put your learning into action. Okay. All right. So let's talk about gauging your progress by your results. So sometimes um, we get this result that is undesirable. We don't like this result. Okay. We're working hard. How come my team's not growing? Other people's teams are growing. What's happening? Okay. And um, what do I not know? Or what are they doing different? Okay. Uh, so those are the questions that a lot of people think about. Uh, so you are looking at... You guys think that way sometimes? Okay. <laughs> results and so if you're looking at results we need to go backwards because beliefs it creates thoughts thoughts create feelings feelings create actions and actions create results okay so we have to go all the way back have you heard that before saying uh yes it's in that um uh, millionaire mind yep yep yeah, I think that's what she read before she wrote this. <laughs> <laughs> to the original, to the core beliefs. Okay, so something we're believing, um, some false belief that is causing us to have these patterns of action or inaction of self sabotage. Okay, so we're going to look at some of those things. Okay, most people want to succeed, but this belief system is getting in their way. So really what is getting in their way, or your way, is your belief system. Okay, and so what is this belief? Okay, it's actually some fears, some unresolved subconscious fears. So some things you believe 
um, about yourself um, is, is stopping you, okay? So I've, I think I've narrowed it down. I think I've been able to successfully help people overcome some of this. So hopefully it'll help you too. All right, so this subconscious fear causes a lot of self-sabotage. The self-sabotage is like keeping this umbrella up even when the rain has stopped and the sun is shiny. Okay, so you don't want to get wet. And, if and you know, I've seen the self-sabotage in a lot of people, um, in myself sometimes, uh, where you have all the things in place and you just do something. You can't explain why you did it. I don't know. Yeah. Have you seen that before? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, we do it all the time, don't we? Un uh, unconsciously, subconsciously. Yeah. Or um, may you forget that you still have it up, okay? So you stop yourself from feeling the discomfort of fear, okay? But you also stop yourself from feeling the joys of success and, um, you know, not allowing yourself to experience the ebbs and flows of life because sometimes it's uncomfortable, but you get over it and you live through it and it's amazing. Okay, so if you think about this, I want you to put your umbrella down. <laughs> you know, you, you will survive. Your heart will be okay. Your, heart, your gut will be okay. Everything's going to be fine. Right? You're just like everybody else. Um, for me, I just felt like, you know, somehow I'm different, that I'm lacking, that I'm less, that I'm, you know, inadequate in some ways. But guess what? I found out that I'm the same as everybody else. And so once I allow myself to be vulnerable, to, to just follow the actions and to swallow my pride, things happen. So let's step back, be still and refocus. Okay, if you're running, running too fast and just, you know, just uh, not really seeing where you're going and wondering why things are not happening, then let's stop and refocus for a minute. And once you refocus, then you can plow forward and have that success that you want. So it helps to step back, all right? So just step, uh, take a moment and uh, consider um, what's happening around you, finding some of the patterns. Okay, so the unresolved subconscious fear, fears, that's what we're gonna talk about. You've got different fears, um, other people have different fears, I have different fears, but once we face it and we resolve it, it's gonna be great, okay? So we need to, if we don't identify it and resolve it, will constantly have this obstruction, these obstacles, distractions, okay? And you'll still have this groundhog stay um, over and over and over again until you get the message. Okay, so people, you can see yourself sub sabotaging, sabotaging, you know, you're doing great, 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 and boom, something happens, you go down again, great, 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 this distraction, this obstacle, this problem, you know, what's happening? Why aren't you getting past this? elite or getting past this premiere okay you feel like that ever yeah a lot <laughs> we'll have to figure this out so okay i'm going to tell you and it's going to be something that you might feel a little bit shocked and vulnerable okay it's i feel the same way i felt the same way and um and sometimes i i find that i still have some of this junk inside okay so our biggest fear is actually that we have this pride, okay? Pride is this subconsciously forgetting to be connected to God and masking a deep fear of not being good enough. Ooh, okay, I want you to remember that definition because as we go throughout this class, it's going to come up lots of times. So pride is our subconsciously, you know, our minds subconsciously forgetting to connect to God. And then we're masking this deep fear of not being good enough um, inadequacy. We don't want people to see, um, and so we, we self-sabotage all the time. So of course we're not good enough. You know, we're not strong enough without God, you know, but we forget, we forget, um, and it is a subconscious thing. And that's one of the core beliefs, okay, that we have, a belief that we're inadequate. And we, um, you know, it makes us so sensitive to anything and everything that remotely hints of our inadequacy. So remembering this, you know, we may not be aware of it because it's subconscious, okay? But if you feel this ugh, icky, icky thing in your gut when you're trying to do certain things, and you just feel like I'm going to be embarrassed, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to mess up, so I'm going to look bad, that is pride. Okay, so we need to forget about, um, you know, that side of it and, you know, face 
what it is that we need to face, which is, you know, that we're, we're human, that we're just like each other, um, that we can actually connect to God and then feel power again, you know, that uh, plug in, uh, you know, like a computer. It's no good being unplugged, okay, with no batteries, nothing. It's no good. It's, you know, it has lots of potential. Great. It has all these RAMs and memory, whatever. Perfect. But if it doesn't get plugged in to the source of power, it does nothing. And it's exactly like us. We have great potential. Big deal. If we're not connected to God, we're not going to be able to get anywhere and do anything great. Okay? So that's what we, we are. So this fear or pride causes us to avoid situations and people who might cause us to be vulnerable. Okay? So we protect ourselves from revealing this fear unfortunately, by self-sabotaging our success in any way possible. <laughs> you know, what a bummer, right? One way we self-sabotage is to make lots of valid excuses, <laughs> right? I'm a single mom. I'm a busy mom. I'm a whatever. My husband is gone all the time. Whatever the excuse is, everybody has a situation. And I promise you that with God's help, whatever your situation is, you can overcome it and you will overcome it if you allow God in. Okay, I have seen, you know, new mums, right, succeed and I've seen people that have babies and say, oh, I have babies, I can't do it. Okay, whatever your excuse is, that's your reason to succeed. If you really want to get out of this rut, that's your reason to succeed. So whatever the excuse is, write it down and use that as an excuse to succeed. So another way, uh, people self-sabotage is to keep busy and distracted. Oh, I have another course to have to take. Oh, I have this sort of thing at church. All of these things. Yes, 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 yes. I really or... want to do this business. Lots you know, if you really start. want it, um, I'll show you why you're, you're self-sabotaging. So now we avoid this discomforts of success. Isn't that funny? We're scared of success. <laughs> so, you know, because it's true, success is paved with some discomforts because we're out of our comfort zone, right? We have stumbling blocks, we make mistakes, and we're very vulnerable. And I'm fortunate to have um, Ben to support me, but, you know, oh boy, he actually helps me see um, things in the mirror. And it, you know, it's very uncomfortable. You know, I break down and I cry, and, you know, I get up again because I'm all, oh, that's me. Okay, let's fix that. Let's change that. Um, and you, you, you want to kind of blame and you know it's not me it's all these things and it's all the excuses but at the end of the day we have to own our power own our actions and say okay how do I fix this because I am I have this ability to change things and I just have to remember that okay so um, this journey really is uncomfortable but you know fail it, because of failures and um, to get to the place of true happiness, we have to pass through that. All right, so I wrote here, we have to pass through discomforts of failure to get to a place of true happiness, joy and fulfillment. And that's exactly um, what every successful person goes through. You can't cheat your way out of this. You can't get to the top and go, ha, ah, you know, well, you have to go through this. And, you know, luckily for us, we have, um, we develop ourselves and we change. And so when we get to the end, we are um, successful creatures and we can't help it but continue to be successful. So the easiest and the fastest way um, is to recognize um, this pride. And as soon as we recognize it, we make connections to God and that pride disappears. Okay. Um, I'll explain some examples later on. Uh, so we can replace the fears with faith and trust. And over and over, we have to remind ourselves of this. Okay. So, oh boy, I'm so scared to talk to so-and-so. Why? Pride. Fear. Right. Uh, God, help me, you know, open up, help, you know, serve this person, take care of them help them in whatever way I can and present the message that I need to present and, you know, get over myself and get, you know, get, I, I tell myself this, this is a thing I say, burn jade on the altar. So if I am going to consecrate my life to sharing, to helping people, then why am I getting in the way of me fulfilling my calling? Okay. So burn that pride on the altar. And guys, remember pride is ego. Ego is edging God out. Okay. So keep that in mind. So as soon as I feel that discomfort, 
I start to try, um, you know, pray and realign my, my life again. You know, I can read my scriptures. I can um, sing songs. I can do whatever to just get this heart um, to be filled with love and eliminate that fear inside, okay? Uh, so start by eliminating distractions too and simply doing um, simple, important, productive tasks. And I explain this. This is uh, something that really helped me. So it reminds me of Stephen Covey's teaching about urgent versus important. If you don't know this, um, you know, look up uh, Stephen Covey's uh, teachings, his his books, and this is a fantastic skill that every successful person um, That's in needs. His book, Seven so habits. we want to have as little to do um, in. Uh, to do urgently as we can. So you see these quadrants. There's one, two, three, four quadrants here. Um, so it's it's um it's a matrix: urgent, not urgent, unimportant, and important. So quadrant one, okay, is urgent and important. We want to, um, you know, not stay here very long. So many people fight fire with fire and constantly live here because they wait until something happens and then boom. Because that's a crisis. People who are living their life in constant crisis, they urge, have urgent and important things that they're constantly dealing with because they're not spending enough time in quadrant two. They fix it and they fix it and they keep fixing it and then they can't keep um, you know, working on it. They can't get on top of this. All right, so one way to get on top of it is to move on to quadrant two. So you have a little bit of foresight, you see schedule things, you plan ahead, and then you just get on top of it before it becomes an urgent matter. All right, so you're not stressed out trying to fight this fire with fire. All right, so you move out of there. So recognize that you need to plan more effectively if you're constantly overwhelmed and taking care of urgent problems and situations. So when people tell me, oh, I'm overwhelmed, I've got all these things to do, it's because you haven't um, scheduled properly, you haven't planned properly. And it's a skill, guys. If you don't know how to do it, talk to somebody that knows how to do it well and copy them. All right, so a long time ago, I learned from all these people. I read lots of books. You know, one lady, like Teresa Harding, says, okay, put the most important things first on your schedule, your family, your kids, your um, church, all these things, done. And then put the next important thing, and then the next important thing, and then we'll get rid of all the other junk. And another person said, hey, you know, if your kids are doing more than two or three activities outside of the home, eliminate that. Okay, so just give them a couple of things, and that's it. Don't overwhelm them. Don't overwhelm yourself. Right? And I thought, oh, that's really smart. And then also, hey, you know, you have a choice to answer phone calls when, you know, it's your time block to answer phone calls. And I thought, uh, <laughs> I didn't realize that I could do that. Um, you know, if the phone rings, I'm like, ah, oh, I have to answer it. If somebody texts me, I'm like, oh, I have to answer that too. But I realized, hey, I don't need to. And I will do what I need to do at the right time. Okay, and slowly and surely my life is more controlled and relaxed and, um, you know, it works not so much better, so much, so much better. Okay. And, and whatever is unimportant and important is determined by your personal mission statement. So if you've sat down, you've thought about your purpose in life and everything, you've written out a vision and mission statement, something that might be important to you, like um, having your kids involved in a lot of things, may not be as important to someone else. Um, it all depends on what you, who you are and what your mission, what you're trying to accomplish. So the important things are those things that you're scheduling because all has to do with goals and tasks. Um, but the higher than that is your mission statement, your purpose um, statement, your vision for where you want to go. So that, that's what determines what's important and unimportant. The most important, the um, most things that are important and not urgent, that's where progress is made. Because um, little things like studying uh, every a little bit every day or, you know, talking to someone every day, like in your network marketing business, um, little things that don't, that don't seem to be urgent, but they are going to be very key to helping you reach your vision. And your purpose. Peace and tranquility. <sighs> <laughs> okay, so look at this chart here. Um, you, you know, here's the chart where you can go and, and figure out where your, your things go. So if you have this quadrant drawn out and write down all the things in your life, is this important? Is this urgent? Is this not urgent? Is this not important? Is it not urgent? So write it in and 
Now, I realize a lot of people are listening to this, and I just want to describe what um, this chart looks like because um, I know a lot of our team members are listening to the podcast, and you can't really see this chart. If you do want to log in later on and, and see it, um, you can just find this under the business uh, advanced business training. So there's four quadrants. It's like uh, four squares. On the top, you have the what the two top squares are important. The two bottom ones are unimportant. On the side, on the other side, we have the urgent ones and the not urgent. Um, I don't know any better way to describe it. You think that describes it enough, saying? Sorry, I got distracted. No, that's all right. I was just, I know a lot of people are listening to this um, rather than watching it. And so I was just describing it out. So I'll, yep. I'll play it. I think, I think that, that, that. Put it all in those boxes. Okay. And then you can say, eh, I get it. I get it. So quadrant one, three, and four, you know, if we're there, it actually limits our vision and reduces our, our vision and it helps, it, it limits what we can do. All right. Those are not good places to be. All right, so we can't see a way out because we're so caught up in our problems, okay? And when we're there all the time, you know, we get to a point where we're pretty selfish and we don't even realize that. Okay, me and my problem, me and my problem can't help anybody else, can't help, can't do anything. Okay, and so what I would suggest is to rub sandalwood and clary sage on your third eye right here, lift it up, okay, and repeat to yourself, I can see solutions and success. I can see solutions and success, okay? And with cardamom, you rub that oil on your tummy to help you be objective and to disconnect with your pride and allow you to change. Because when you're caught up, you think that's you. That's your identity, but it's not your identity. It's just a negative feeling that's hanging around, all right? So if you disconnect, it's going to make life so much easier. Okay, so quadrant three. So lemongrass and cilantro, uh, will help you let go of the need to hold on to tasks that are unimportant. Okay, we're hoarders sometimes because we think, oh, I've quadrant three are things that seem urgent or are, are, are urgent. Um, it means they have deadlines, timelines, you have to take care of them or, you know, it's going to be too late and it's unimportant. Give that and, and that and that and that and that. And then when you really think about it, you think, uh, it actually isn't very important. I'm like holding on to it. <laughs> Okay, so then you can let go. If you can start organizing your life in these quadrants, um, it'll be great. Another thing is, I was just thinking about So this. does everybody understand? Anything in quadrant three or four, whether it's urgent or not urgent, it's not important. It doesn't need to be part of your life. You have to make a decision many, many times in your life between things that are good and things that are better and best. So the best is what you want to do have take you know time in your life the things that are sometimes they look like good oh you know what? participating in this charity it's a good thing but it's not important to your mission or your vision statement let other people who um you know devote themselves to that take care of that you've got to focus and so eliminate the unimportant things no matter how good they are fill your life with the best things those things are important as according to your personal purpose in life, your, your vision, your mission statement. So it's very important to have those written down. Just now, ask yourself, is this gonna matter in a hundred years, in a thousand years, okay? You know, you, you've got your beautiful family, you've got your life, you've got all these things. Sometimes some things don't really, really matter. So toss them out. So, so that's in quadrant three. All right, it's an unimportant and urgent. The hardest to do is when you're tossing out things that seem to matter, but they are not key to your success in life, your personal mission. Or, like I say, good things that you have to let go to be able to choose the best things. Let these things go. If they are not important, don't do them no matter how urgent they are. And I'll give you an example. Sometimes we get caught up and we don't see. Um, an example is if somebody that, uh, you know, wants you to send them research right away and, or for a particular oil or health concern because they're skeptical. They're like, I don't know. You show me, you prove to me. Okay. That is not important guys. Okay. If those people really, really are skeptical, they've already decided against it. Okay. So no matter what you do, 
They're still going to be negative. They're still not going to buy into it. So you want them to be convinced, but you know what? It's not urgent for your business success. Okay, you've got, a, you've got tons of people that want to know more, that are hungry for knowledge, that are hungry for support, and they will search and they will find things. And you can support those people and give those people the love and support in your time, not the people that are wasting your time. Okay. So you're making the decision between helping, spending 10, 20 hours helping one person that may not ever go anywhere or spend that same amount of time helping maybe, you know, 30 people that are going to improve and make a step forward. So it's between the, you know, sometimes you just have to make that choice between the good and the best. I learned to just ignore them <laughs> and just send them in a different direction. Say, look, okay, here's some research um, on this site. Go for it. You know, so you don't have to do it and don't have to waste any more time. Don't have to answer them. And, you know, you can delegate to websites, delegate to whatever, but you don't have to take care of it. Okay. Ah, let go. <laughs> okay, so it feels much better. Okay, quadrant four is unimportant. It's not urgent. Eliminate it altogether. Okay, this goes with thoughts, beliefs, and ideas. Sometimes some ideas are, you know, it was great at the beginning when you thought about it, but if you think about it again, <laughs> no, it's not really important right now. It goes into quadrant four, and quadrant four, everything goes in the trash. Okay, so let that. Let me just tell you, if you're operating quadrant four, you're operating on fear. If you're doing things that are not important to help you carry out your life's mission or your vision statement or whatever, whatever and it's not particularly, like you get a survey in your emails and you're like, oh, it might be a good thing. I'll be a good citizen and take this survey and everything like that. Unless that's your mission in life, you're wasting time. Um, you got to focus on the things that are going to drive you forward, the things that will help you get to your goals. Otherwise, you're just scared. You're just trying to avoid doing things that are important. So stay out of quadrant four and you'll move forward. All right. Um, so that is quadrant four. Um, and that's one of the ways that people sabotage their own success. So like I said, sometimes I, I help people with this and, you know, spending two hours organizing your office Great, but um, it's not rain-making activity, so you're being distracted. It's unimportant right now, um, and, uh, you know, it's not urgent either. So sometimes people spend so much time doing things that... Now, if you have an activity like that, like if one of the things that is important to you is to keep a clean house, schedule specific time to it and stay within that time. You can schedule 10 minutes during this block on this day, and you'll be amazed, whatever amount of time you schedule for that activity, your behavior, your activity will fill that amount of time. So just keep it small and so you can get on with other important things. It's uh, not important and they don't realize why their business is not growing and that's a little bit of self-sabotaging, you can see that. Okay, so quadrant one, our uh, crisis. They arise usually because you have not spent enough time in quadrant two. So you haven't planned things out. You haven't figured out where you want to go, what you want to do, and written it down clearly. And so, you know, it, it happens. But, um, you know, sometimes you've wasted time in quadrant three and four too. And then things happen. And so you're, you're back in quadrant one again. So an example with that, with your doTERRA business is, you get to the end of the month only to realize that you haven't spent that slight edge hour or two every day building your team and working with people and educating people about the, the promotions, the products, um, the, you know, helping them understand how to order and all those things. You can't do all, you know, get to the end of the month and say, oh, I haven't done all these things that I'm supposed to do daily. And then all of a sudden, a quadrant two item becomes a quadrant one item, item, and it's a crisis. And so you're working really fast, and you're increasing the stress in your life and making your life shorter. <laughs> uh, so, was, but you know what? Sometimes crises happen, and no matter how good you are, yeah. um, but you know you can greatly reduce them because there's a lot of things that you can do. All right, so take a moment and plan. Right. Otherwise, it's going to be very difficult to get off this Groundhog's Day merry-go-round. It just happens. Over. I hope everybody understands the Groundhog's Day um, reference. You, you get that saying? 
Yeah, you're doing things over and over again, you're getting the results. Yeah, so this has reference to a, a, a movie by Bill Murray where he wakes up every single day and it's still, it's, he's a reporter, it's Groundhog's Day and the same thing happens every, every, every day. So people always use this um, to, you know, express when they, they are seeing the same results over and over and over. And um, your life's just repeating itself and you're trying to get off the wheel. Get off this, right? And that's one way to do it, just to get off it, is to start planning. And then, you know, even if you do a little bit at a time with the slight edge, um, you know, you'll be able to get off it and uh, live your life, okay? So, so we've talked about uh, okay. Three, so I already four, mentioned one, to you that you need so to be clear on where you go, what two. you're doing. So most people, when I ask them, what do you want? What's your ideal day? But you know, I don't know, I don't know. Okay. That's why it's so important. So, the, to um, so quadrant your, two is. That's why it's so important to get your vision down. Um, get your mission statement. Find out what it is. I you're doing doTERRA for a reason. Find out what that reason is, and that will help you know what's important you moving your life in a direction you have determined this is you scheduling important things in your life if you don't schedule the tasks um, that build your future uh, the agendas of others and schedule uh, will schedule will schedule and determine your actions your life and your ultimately your future uh, so stay in quadrant two sorry i helped her write some of that <laughs> <laughs> just being <pretty. laughs> taking initiative scheduling your mission your purpose your goals and into your daily weekly monthly and yearly plans and then follow through by staying true to yourself um you know i have been very blessed with uh, you know some fantastic teachers around me and uh, and ben is awesome so we we do plan a lot and we do write down our goals and we try to stick with it as much as we can we help each other out um, and there's times that we, you know, don't agree with things, um, but when we do have a unified goal and um, purpose, things happen and it's awesome. So some of the questions that you want to ask yourself, if money, health and time wasn't an issue, what do you want your life to look like? Some people have never given themselves an, a moment to think about this. Okay. okay so, so that, that's, um that's, you know, what she's talking about here is your, your purpose, your mission in life. And all these questions, these are questions that you would use um, to try to brainstorm that and, and detect that for yourself. Think about it now. Okay, take a few minute, minutes and think about it now. If like money and time and health wasn't a problem, what would I want to do? Okay, so what's my ideal day, week and month look like? All right, so what time do I want to wake up? What do I want to do in the morning? What do I want to do? When do I want to start work? When do, you know, all these things. What and do you want to um, do for work? So what, do you want to live? what brings me joy is another thing too. I, I get lots of answers like, oh, I like to help people. Yes, um, but how do you like to help people? All right, be more specific. Keep digging. If you are not digging deeper, you're just going to be frustrated with yourself, okay, because you're going to get in your way because you don't know what you want. Remember, if you fail to plan, you're planning to fail, okay? So what is my special gift to the world? So don't be, you know, just um, self-sabotaging here your, your and think that you're humble. Your no, no, I'm not good compared to anybody else. We're not comparing. Even you if you've got doing. a little smidgen of goodness about you in any area, and um, that should be used as a gift. Okay, if you have one talent, go for it. Just maximize that talent. Two talents, maximize those talents. Um, for more information on this, uh, you can look at the training on finding your why. Um, we walk you through this. So for me, you know, I don't know if I'm the greatest teacher in the world. It doesn't matter. Um, you know, that's something that is small that I can give to the world. If I have that little skill, then I'm going to maximize and use it to the best of my ability to serve God, to serve humanity. Uh, so look at yourself, things that you enjoy, things that you're good at, um, and, uh, you know, use that to bless the world. Um, the other thing is how do I want to live my life? Okay, so um, we have, I've read stories where people have creeds that they follow for themselves, you know, rules that they like to keep um, just for themselves because they, they like to become this kind of person. All right, so that's some of the, you know, things that uh, in your mind that you can think about, you can write down. 
please, if you can write it down, you can look at it um, objectively and you can see holes, you can see um, different thought patterns. Okay, so in other words, what is the purpose or mission of your life? If you can get that down, you don't have to have it perfect. You just get it started and it will evolve and you'll discover more about yourself. But um, the more clear you are, the more you will live in that second quadrant and have an awesome life. Okay, so. Okay, so that's the first part of um, uh, the, the training. Um, most of the time she spent on that. I um, just want to pause here to see if there's any questions or any comments. Sang, did you she explain that all right for us? Yeah, 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 everything's good. Um, I don't have any questions. I'm just busy taking notes. Okay, fantastic. All right, excellent um, talk, uh, subject about the uh, quadrants of uh, important, uh, non-important, urgent. Beautiful way to, um, so what, it, what we're doing here is scheduling our success. And so we're going in quadrant two. We, we know what's important to us and that we're informed about that because of our vision, our purpose and everything. Um, and we go to our planner and we schedule in those important things and everything else we don't, don't schedule in. So this is how to discover what's important. And now we're gonna get into the second part of the training here. Back up. Okay, let's go. Identify your fears. Um, this is kind of tricky, but you know, your friends and family can help you identify your fears because uh, you know, as you talk about it, as you um, ask and allow yourself to be vulnerable, it comes out. Uh, okay, so it is hard to see what you don't see. It's hard to see what you don't know, um, but uh, you'll be able to do it. The the discomfort okay inside of you in any way um that would be a clue that hey something there just now it's made me feel uncomfortable so i need to identify what is that fear i need to keep digging deeper and deeper okay if we can't see our fears we can't change and we can't get out of our own way and you keep on being in the same place unfortunately and being very frustrated all right, like the slight edge, you know, a little bit of discomfort every day and just moving through those fears, you're going to get there. Um, people that are staying there because they're so comfortable and they're scared to be uncomfortable, you know what, everything moves, everything changes and you're going to be uncomfortable later on anyways. So, you know, allow yourself to go through this discomfort and force yourself to succeed. All right, so there's a, po a popular saying, feel the fear and do it anyways. I love it because I, I do this to myself a lot and I throw myself um, under the bus or in deep water and I learn how to swim and I learn how to, to survive. Um, and it's a name of a book by Susan Jeffers. Okay, so feel the fear and do it anyways. Um, so successful people see opportunities and push through fears. All right, and that's physically when you push through fears, you will get confident, right? You, you can't just sit around and just be confident and wait until you be confident to get out there and do something you just have to do that and just follow that um, pride of yours and um, just go out there and face people talk to people you know call people and just be okay love yourself so action cures and is a cure for fear taking, action uh, cures fear action steps, action action so, so i had a lady she says well everybody tells me just do it you know i don't know what that means and I, that's exactly what it means. Just take one task and do it, okay? Instead of sitting around going, I have to study, I have to research, I have to hide behind books. Okay, just do it. So changing our outlook will help us see solutions. You will see actions that you can take now. So break down your task and make um, an action plan. Okay, so number one, uh, this is how you can take action. Write down your thoughts and find the fears. Okay, that's one action because you have some fear. You just don't want to look at it. Well, that's not going to get you anywhere. So I'm going to sit down and I'm going to write down, I am fearful of people rejecting me. I am fearful of people misunderstanding me. I, whatever, write it all down. Okay, and then I face them and find a solution. Okay, that's, my mom's like that. Oh, my dad's like that. Uh, solution is I am just going to um, present, you know, to one person each day or call people. I'm just going to make myself say it and do it 
and then I'm going to talk to my upline, whatever it is. Okay, you will have some plans. If you have the eye to see solutions, like rich and successful people do, you will find solutions. Okay, and with God, everything is possible. Okay, so then it doesn't seem so bad. Once you decide, hey, I'm going to overcome this fear this way. And so when you have that fear again, you go, oh, I know what to do. I've got an action plan. All right, so cardamom helps you um, get out of yourself, get out of your situation, see your situation in an objective way. So that's number one, to write down your thoughts and fears. That's okay. number cardamom. Number two, <laughs> resolve it in your mind and your heart, okay? Uh, don't wait till the problems go away. Uh, you know, it's like a, a river of fear or pain. You know, sometimes people sit on this side of the bank and go, can you just dry up already so I can walk through? Um, no, it's not going to do that. You're not going to be stronger um, by standing here waiting. You need to push through, okay? So take a risk and try some solutions. Um, you never know. So I've made lots of mistakes in my life and I just keep making more mistakes and the more mistakes I make, the closer I get to success, okay? And it's just part of the journey. All right. Um, if, if anybody listening to this call or watching it afterward um, was wondering where to start, there's a list at the bottom of this page that we're going to go down, go through it at the end here. So just hang in there. That's the Smell Deep Blue, the soothing blend, which is the blend that helps you go through this, through this um, pain. So I want to impress upon you that there are solutions to everything. So I tell myself that all the time when I can't see a solution and I start whining and complaining to my husband and he says to me the same thing, there's a solution, there's got to, there's, there's got to be a way. Sounds right? like a great so, guy. Uh, we can think positively and find solutions. <laughs> if you aren't seeing any solutions, then maybe you're not thinking positively. Okay? Even if we believe we are, maybe we're not. Okay. Uh, number three, get to know yourself and understand what your real limitations are and what your imagined limitations are. Okay, so you, know, you, you, you get this, you get this, okay? You write it down, see the difference, okay? And if you need some help, you can go and talk to uh, a mentor and other friends and say, is this, is this just imagined? Is this so I'm just going to interject here. Um, so on one and four, um, sorry, one and three, Jade's saying, you know, um, look at, do some introspection. Um, the best way to approach this, instead of trying to sit down and, and think of what your fears are, because you might be inventing new fears that are, don't actually exist. The fears don't really exist themselves. But if you sit down and you say, these are the things I need to accomplish, which I've drawn out of my vision and mission statement and everything and extrapolated into goals, what, why, um, and look at, look at that and say, I want to do this. Is there anything that's stopping me? Or why haven't I done it? Um, those are better ways of looking at um, trying to, find out what the biggest stumbling block is first and so you can eliminate the right blocks systematically <laughs> it's just me or is this real okay so sometimes um you know there's a lot of imagined limitations uh, that we don't realize and we think it's real so number four connect to god okay this is very very important for everybody he's part of the formula for success Imagined limitations lead us to excuses, to mask fears. And fear is pride because it assumes that one has to do it all on her own. Okay, sometimes we forget. Or his and own. of course, we can't do it on our own. Of course, we feel weak and doubtful. So in this state, we truly believe that we can't. And you are right. No, we can't. Okay, when we feel weak and alone, okay, sometimes we need to consider... Um, we consider that you know our situation is extreme, is uniquely unfortunate compared to everyone else. So somehow we have the shorter end of the stick. Okay, um, we can use anything as an excuse um, and believe so strongly that our reason is so valid. Okay, I've got this many jobs, I've got this many things to do, all these things. Yes, we chose that, guys. Um, so just be. Um, I think, um, I think objective with yourself, okay, and be honest with yourself, all right, and um, yeah, don't let yourself get away with some of these silly excuses because at the end of the day, you're going to feel very uncomfortable because you're not where you want to be. You keep on self-sabotaging, and that's 
can I, I'm just going to give an example here. So Jade, um, she's saying, look, you go, go through your life and you say, is this important? Or is this not important? Um, and you can look at that quadrant, that four quadrant thing we did before. If it's not important, you don't do it. If it's something that you have to do, you feel you have to do, you really have to ask yourself, is this important to me? And if it is, is it more important than this other thing? And you can't have 16 important things. You have to focus your energy on something in order to drive it forward. If you have 23 big things that you want to do in your life, chances are you're going to split yourself into 23 ways and, you, and those aren't going to have as big as impact. So sometimes you might have to choose what is the most important, what are the most important things to you um, and eliminate the things that are not going to be part of your vision and mission statement and driving you forward. So that's a very difficult task to do. It has to, you know, you have to take some introspection and, and think about it. Can I talk about that right now? Yes, please. That is, that's my life right now. <laughs> I, I, I think that's always me because I, I don't know, I've been involved in a lot of things, but right now it seems extremely crazy. Um, and some of the things I, I can't eliminate, like my daughter's wedding, I have to plan, help her plan that. My son's mission, I have to help him get ready for that. And so those are things that are important and that I need to do, yes. But I'm also, you know, on the band board. I'm also on the council day camp committee. Um, I'm also involved in the school choirs and things like that. And those things are important, yes, because, you know, I like to be involved with my children's activities and, and they do need help and, you know, um, volunteers are necessary. But do I need to be in charge of that? Probably not. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and I could help and volunteer in smaller ways than I am. Well, and, let me ask you a question. No, go ahead. Sorry, I'm cutting you off. <laughs> well, sometimes I think that um, we do those things <clears throat> because we get, you know, praise and adoration. Oh my gosh, we couldn't do this without you. And that makes us feel good and it gives us endorphins. So then, of course, I'm going to say yes again because I can handle it and I've got, I have time, I can do it. But then we say yes so much that we, I don't have time, you know, not doing girls camp and day camps and all that. And so it's, it's just a lot. I think saying no is so important. Um, and you've got to go back to your, your vision statement, your mission statement. If it wasn't important enough to include in that statement and your purpose of life, then it shouldn't be taking your time. And maybe, yes, sometimes we're, we're doing those things to get that praise. But you ask yourself, do you really need the praise of others? And then you have to really ask the hard questions. This is a good thing to do. This is a good thing to do. And this is the best thing to do. This is my life's purpose. Do I really need to do these other things? And yes, you're going to say, I want to be a part of my kid's life. Um, but choosing the battles and saying, look, what, or having that discussion with them, you know, how can I be best involved? And eliminating the rest, which is going to be a really hard thing to do. It would, I would imagine that would um, free up your time. And that's something, that's decisions you have to make on your, on your own. Um, but it's true, you can't focus on 100 things at once. So you've really got to play your part. And as specific as that can be, it's the more powerful that change and the more powerful effect that you're going to have on the lives of others. Um, it's like a magnifying glass, you know, you're trying to burn it. we're not going to burn ants with the magnifying glass in the sun but maybe a piece of paper or something <laughs> um if you're trying to focus on like three different spots like ch chances are you're not going to you know start the fire that you want to start so yeah I, I i'm i'm thinking about you know the the most successful people um in history and, and they're pretty much known for you know one big thing and that's where they focus their energy and they're able to create a greater light by focusing all that energy. So, anyways, anything else you want to say before we... Okay. Oh. Thank you. So this seems will distract.
and we'll, uh, because this, uh, I'm going to read this here, because we are distracted and focused on ourselves and our problems, we can't see solutions to our problems. So connecting back to God will help clear our minds and strengthen our hearts. And when you find the solution, you know, you feel great sense of satisfaction. Okay, I feel a great sense of satisfaction in yourself and that you and God accomplished this. So I will share with you something very interesting now. In our doTERRA business, there are some common excuses and lies that we tell ourselves and that get in our way. And uh, yeah, we I <laughs> thought uh, um, of, I emailed a whole bunch of teammates and um, accumulated some of their answers. So some of these things are their answers, some of them look really funny. Um, and, uh, you know, but it's very revealing. And I just want you to see that there's a solution to everything. Okay? If we want to succeed, you can find somebody that has made an excuse for that, um, that one problem, or you can see in a person that had the same problem but found a solution for it. Okay. And I just want to take the moment to thank all those people who um, participated in this and, and re replied and gave their, their comments. I know it took some of your time to fill that out for Jade and, and thank you for helping out with that. The first lie is I'm not a salesperson. Okay. Um, <laughs> you know what the root problem is? It's pride. Remember what pride is, right? Pride is just hiding um, a fear of inadequacy and forgetting to connect to God. All right. So we worry about what others think of us. Okay. What do we think of me? All right. Not seeing how you can bless others. Um, by promoting your message, okay? So it's about message, not about sales. And you don't see the value of the products and you're not seeing the job um, as more simple uh, than sales, okay? In, in so, addition, you know, some of us may have bad experiences with very bad or un, unsavory salesmen and we don't want to be that person. So we may, we may have a false um, belief about promotion promoting ourselves and, and sales themselves i think she covers that. seeing your job as more than a simple sale sorry i said that wrong um so you guys you got a great job and um sales is just this little part of it and um yeah anyways some solutions okay you need to have more product training until you are sold on the values and the benefits yourself Okay, so if you feel like it's something fantastic and you are sold yourself, people can sell things that are sold, they are sold on. Okay, so that's a solution. Uh, think and talk about the values and the benefits of the products relevant to your audience. Okay, so... That, that's the definition of a true salesperson. There are many times in my life when I wanted a skilled salesperson to explain to me the values and benefits of, you know, products I was looking at and there was no uh, no one with that training and skills you can be that person and help people in this way it's about service sales is about service um, you know when you see people and you want to explain the products to them just explain it in a way that will benefit them okay you don't make do say anything that's irrelevant and random um, believe you don't have to stress the truth or make outrageous claims it's all about explaining what all the benefits are and how it's going to be benefit them and why they need it in their lives. And then once they are informed, they make a decision and that's their choice and their power. You're not taking any power from them. That's the mark of a true um, salesman. In your meaningful message, I have to change some of the typos here. Sorry. Um, <laughs> believe in your meaningful message. Um, you know, it is a calling for me. I feel like, so if it's calling, you will continue that momentum. Uh, disconnect yourself from the outcome. All right. So if you have this message you want to share with people, you don't have to worry about the outcome. Okay. If they don't buy, then I've been unsuccessful. It's because I'm unsuccessful. There you go. I'm no good. Okay. And uh, think kindly about and do not judge sale. So you're measuring your success not on whether people buy or not, but on whether you have adequately informed them of all the benefits and have given them the invitation. That's how you're, you're successful rather people, than how people buy. Because, you know, then you won't be judged because, you know, we think so poorly of salespeople or these people that are liars and cheaters and everything. 
So of course you don't want to be like that. You don't want to be a liar and a cheater. And so you don't want to sell because you don't want that. But guess what? You've just judged those people. So if we just quit judging and say, you know what, they're good people too. You know, they're trying to do a job and um, love them. Then you'll find that you give yourself some slack and that other people give you some slack. And so I learned that. Uh, you will overcome the fears of sales the more you make yourself share the oils. So the more success you get, the more you have confidence and you're not going to be afraid of people rejecting your, your pitch. Okay, so that's number one. Number two is I... Guys, I just realized we've come up on the hour and we still have about 30 minutes to go. Um, <laughs> you guys have to go. Um, I'll, I'll go ahead and stay and just want to see if... You guys had some time and want to be considerate. I'll probably stay on for a bit, but then I'll do it. Okay, all right. No worries. I understand. But people. So people that want to do this business and then they say, oh, I don't know a lot of people. And so it's pride. That's the root problem again. Because again, with God, you can find people. You can, you know, start with where you're at. You can see solutions. Okay, so we're scared of making friends and socializing because you risk rejection um, because you've already rejected yourself, all right? So when you accept and love yourself, guess what? Everybody loves you too and you get more and more friends no matter where you go, okay? And, uh, you know, I know that for a fact because we've moved so many places and I've always made some fantastic, good, close friends that I will forever keep for the rest of my life. Um, so possible solutions. Develop a healthy self-love. And remember, healthy self-love is not self-esteem, high self-esteem. It's just getting to know yourself, be kind to yourself, and love yourself the way God loves you, okay? And then more people will love you and accept you for being you, for being human, okay? You will make friends with friends, and your circle of influence will grow. So whatever friend you have right now, they will have a friend or two, and their group uh, their friends will be your friends and then you know it just grows that way so you know it doesn't matter if you don't know a lot of people you will know a lot of people um, eventually if you allow yourself to okay and that's where you start so if you're still in a big rut um, go out and join a club join a group join an association so for me I live in Florida I joined the Destin Women's Club I um, you know I participated in another a women's group and when I was in Canton, Ohio, I joined the Canton Chamber of Commerce and you know I've met with people I had lots of different clubs everywhere I go um, so go ahead and find some friends that way and join the club and participate and give back somehow okay and once you give back it's reciprocated some people will want to get to know you and give back to you okay? and you know accept accept uh, good stuff too all right um okay so you actually know more people than you realize that's another answer that one of the my friends have said um it, it just be aware of all the people that you interact with on a day-to-day -day basis so here um we have an example of doctors uh, your child's teacher that's great because my daughter just told her teacher about essential oils gave her a car gave her some samples and guess what the teacher's mom and the teacher wants to buy oils that's just so simple and then you can make friends with them that way. You've got neighbors, so you, we're social creatures. We've got people all around us, so don't limit your mind um, and use this as an excuse of failure. Okay, so develop friend-making skills. So if you don't know how to make friends, this is a good time to do it. Get the book, uh, How to Win Friends and Influence People. So smile, please, and learn um, to listen to people carefully, hear exactly what they need, sometimes not what they're saying. Um, remember their names, compliment people, learn how to compliment people. Look for the good in people, look for commonalities, and seek to understand and love others. Um, sometimes people just need an understanding ear um, and heart, and then um, whatever you want to say, whatever you're selling, they're sold. Okay, and you, you, you know, you're doing this for a good cause, you're not doing this just to get a buck or two from them. So there's no anxiety there. Number three, I want to, but I'm too busy. I don't have time. Uh, you know, when la 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 happens, then I'll be able to. Okay, you know, when the summer is over, when the winter is over, when the birthday party is over, whatever. Okay, lots of excuses. So those people, their issue 
is um, they don't have a clear idea of what they want in life, okay? And they haven't organized priorities. They uh, need to focus, they just actually focus on can'ts and obstacles, allowing distractions to validate and mask their real fear, right? Remember what their real fear is? You know, inadequacy, right? Um, so unorganized in your mind, so you become overwhelmed to see how, you know, this here new business can fit into your life, all right? And the other root a problem is fear of change, okay? Because things might get worse. No, it might get better. <laughs> uh, some people, um, some solutions here. Okay, so if we think about it, we have 24 hours in a day just like everybody else and believe that you are equally capable as everyone else to have control over your 24 hours. All right, some people think that things happen to them and they don't know how to fix that problem. Oops. The busy thing is okay. always a priority. Um, so identify your, uh, so identify what really you want in life, what makes you happy, um, and what would you be doing if money wasn't an issue. So that was what we talked about earlier. Okay, no, find out who you really are, what you really want in life, and be organized that way. Um, identify your why, you what, what your role does doTERRA are. play in your path. Everybody uh, uses doTERRA in a different way, um, you know, because we all have our different pathways. For me, doTERRA is a way for me to, to share God's love, um, for me to serve people, okay? And I serve people through uh, healing their mind, body, and spirit, okay? Other people do it differently. You figure out how it fits in your life, okay? Because if you don't, know what you want then you don't know how it fits so go back to identifying what it is that you need okay and of course identify fear of change why are we afraid of change okay if i am a fear of success and my fear of whatever it is figure it out um so i'll give you an example really quickly so maybe that helps um 12 year old jade did great in school you know install all the awards and a friend that was always second, jealous, told lies and, you know, made everybody dislike Jade. And so I have this inner fear that I didn't realize of succeeding because if I succeed, I'll lose friends. And um, when I found out, I thought, oh, that's silly. You know, why am I afraid of that? So we just dug, dug, dug deeper and I'm like, oh, I have that fear. So I hold myself back because it makes me different and whatever else. So I had to change and I, so I decided, hey, um, if I'm successful, I get to help more people. And um, I like successful people, so I'm not afraid of people being unhappy that I'm successful. I praise successful people, I admire successful people. And so suddenly I let go of that fear and I embrace success. Okay, so I figured that out and I worked on it that and so can you. So you have other things in your life, situation, the things that happened and something is stopping you. So figure that out and then you can move forward. It doesn't take very long actually. Uh, once you figure that out, you take some actions and suddenly things move faster than you realize. So understand the power of Slight Edge too. The Slight Edge is a book, but Slight Edge just means that doing a little bit each day will be worth it at the end. Okay, when it's all accumulated. Okay, number four, I don't have enough money. Okay, so that. Did, did anybody have any comments or, or questions on those? Okay, we'll keep going through. <laughs> scarcity, that's a root uh, problem, scarcity. And scarcity is caught in a poverty mindset. And then it's self imposed limitation. Because money is a mind uh, issue. Okay, it isn't um, an actual issue uh, with money currency it's mind okay there's lots of opportunities out there and sometimes we just don't take it because we are so fearful okay so the solutions uh work on abundant thinking and mindset abundant thinking means uh, collaboration connection with people love integrity things like that that's abundant okay um follow proper money management principles okay so you can think and think and think, but if you just do act to with and use your learning, that uh, you'll get somewhere with this. So the book, Four Laws of Financial Prosperity, is awesome, available from doTERRA. And I have a picture of that right there, so you can click on that um, and have a look. Doterra. You can actually buy that on your doTERRA account, so go ahead and it's very easy to read, but follow those principles and voila, 
quickly things will change for you because you're just like everybody else, right? You're not different. You're not more unlucky or anything. Um, you know, once you follow those principles, things will happen to you just like it does for everybody else. Okay, so start uh, starting a business like doTERRA is one of the cheapest ways to build a business. So people don't realize the great opportunity that they have right here with doTERRA. So look for solutions such as sharing daily so that you can get your weekly fast start commission to pay for your monthly orders. I had a lady, I could keep telling people this story because she's brilliant. She paid for her very first order and not, not anything after that. And she became silver and she became beyond and she's never paid okay for her order because she kept on sharing and sharing and sharing and then eventually her team just took on momentum and so she's getting lots of fast start lots of all these other things and um you know she never needed to um place an order with her own money anymore because the commissions pay for pay for it so that's another way so people can't say i don't have money i can't do this okay so uh, start sharing with people that's another solution um ask yourself if money weren't an issue um, would you own these products? Okay, if not, then this is a value problem. So I don't have enough money, I don't know how to, you know, that I can make these orders every month. It's a value problem because you're not you're seeing the value of the products. As soon as I saw that how I can replace my shampoos and conditioners and everything else in the home, I thought, oh, what? I'm already spending that money here. Okay, I'm just going to put it over there because I see the value of it. So sometimes when people say that I don't have enough money as an excuse um, and the resolution is you know seeing value all right so if um, money is also a priority issue so some um, you know you will invest in it if it's important to you so can you see the benefits of replacing the products like I said in your home um, can you see that in the end you'll save a lot more money and more than just your um, in health you, you're gonna save uh, money and and heartache and um, you know emotional problems too so here we have the download the mindset cards the successful mindset it is about money and successful so the first one of course starts with I create my life so rich and successful people believe that they create their life and poor people believe that life happens to me okay and there's some oils to help you with that too so that's that's there for you guys to use. Go ahead and click on that and you can get 19 different cards that you can work on and change the way you think about money. Okay, so I don't know enough or I'm not good at, all right? So the root problem of, of that, that excuse is pride, um, fearing that you're vulnerable, that you'll look stupid in front of people, that people won't listen to you. Um, so don't, uh, you know, those people may not understand the slight edge and of gaining and growing knowledge and skills as you um, commit to success. So solution, self-love, connect back to God, clear emotional baggage and generational issue. Um, be humble, vulnerable and real. Be willing to learn, smell cedar wood and marjoram to help you remember uh, that you are like every other human being, that you're not less if others know you, you know, um, who you are or just because you're just another human being and so you're not less than them okay allow others to relate to you more when you are vulnerable so that's that's awesome um of course um you know if you don't know enough you can actually focus on your noble purpose right and um you know it will help you from focusing on yourself okay so be fiercely loyal to your dreams can commit to success no matter how painful it is at times okay um, so that's one thing that I would suggest other people have suggested that use resources look things up in the modern essential book together or ask help from your upline you don't know stuff ask and learn as you go educate yourself more um, and there's plenty of, uh, you know so there are plenty of places to gain skills and knowledge so understand the slight edge principle um, gaining and growing knowledge a little bit at a time confidence comes with experience so do at least 25 classes before we complain okay and so you'll get confident after that believe you are equal and just as good as everyone else okay so this keeps coming up over and over can you see the pattern there all right 
uh, confidence comes only through learning and through making lots of mistakes. So uh, line number six, I am not healthy, so why would anybody believe me? All right, so the root problem is pride. Again, so slow self-love and you know the fear that people won't believe you, uh, fear of not the you know, lack of confidence, and um, that you don't trust yourself. So a solution is start changing your lifestyle and share what success you have. You don't have to be all the way, you know, amazing guru. Sometimes people don't relate to them anymore. Okay, I had a girl go, a guy say to me, oh, my wife doesn't believe that you um, were heavier before. You know, you've always been this this size. And so I'm like, okay, you know, because they, they don't know me before. Okay, so, um, you know, so sometimes sharing your journey is better. Okay, so I've already lost this much weight or I've got, got this um, result, but I still have all these other things I'm resolving. Sometimes people like to jump on the bandwagon and, and help out and go with you. Okay, so people like it when you're real. Uh, share what you know, be honest, um, and uh, that will help people connect to you. Self-love cures judgmental thinking. Uh, okay, this frees you from fears of what other people might think. Okay, it's none of your business what other people think of you. Okay, because sometimes they change their minds, and so you can't keep up. So just might as well not worry about it. Just focus on what you need to focus on, which is self-love and your calling. Detox emotional issues by um, using essential oils and energy healing. So that's one way to do it. Um, be patient with yourself. Own your own power and do not blame. Blame gives away your power and makes you a victim. Um, and again, blame is uh, making excuses. Okay, that's another form of blame. So commit to serving people. Just try to help, reach out and love people. Uh, you know, it's, you lose yourself when you find yourself, basically. So we can't be selfish. So if you know that these oils are great, um, just share. Even if it, you know, hasn't all the way helped you become this amazing, perfect person yet. Um, <laughs> just help out. Uh, release the false belief needing to be perfect before you can do anything. So God qualifies those he calls and understand that you will always have something to do with for the rest of this life. Okay, each trial you learn to overcome gives you the knowledge to share and teach others from the experiences that you've gained, okay, as you become more healthy. Okay, so that's, that's that. So I hope that's clear. Um, and, uh, you know, that will help overcome that feeling of I'm not healthy, why would anybody believe me? Okay, focus on other people. All right, so number seven lie is I need some proper money now. I can't do this until I have money to invest in a business. <laughs> okay, this is fear, a root problem of that, and panic, and short-term thinking, not long-term thinking, not understanding and believing in the doTERRA opportunity, and not understanding how to invest, okay, and uh, investment works. Okay, so to help these or if it's you, they help these people um, with solutions. Understand money mindset. So we talked about that already. Invest a little time now. And even when you're doing your big day to, daytime job, I did that too. You know, I work full time. And then after work, I spend a little bit of time on doTERRA. On the weekends, I spend some time with doTERRA. So watch the um, buckets versus pipeline parable video. That will help you. Okay. And then, of course, what can help you overcome this lie right is um, study the compensation plan and the opportunity. This is a network marketing business and it's brilliant. Okay, I have no shame and nothing to complain about this. I am so proud to be part of doTERRA. And when you feel this way, two other people will feel it. Okay, and um, this is awesome, right? I don't know any other job that can retire me in three, four years. And then retire my husband two years after that. Amazing. Okay. Um, and we can continue doing this. And we work from home. We get to see each other all the time. and get to see the kids. And it's awesome, guys. It's a life that I have always dreamed of. And it can be yours too. Okay. So make friends with successful doTERRA leaders. Right. To understand their beliefs. So rub shoulders with them. Talk to them. All right. And then you understand um, how it blesses people and the rewards that uh, they gain on so many levels, more than just financial. Okay, these people are out there doing stuff that they've always wanted to do to make the world a better place. 
Okay, they, you know, it's such a, a good um, community of people to, to hang out with. So I'm fortunate enough to make friends with a lot of the doTERRA diamonds and, uh, you know, they're the best people in the world, I think. So commit yourself, uh, commit to your dreams. And sometimes when we, you know, have a proper, we have a proper job, so we can have proper money, you know, it's just funny because we don't believe that doTERRA opportunities can work for us. And so um, we, we put our dreams on hold. So that's unfortunate. And the cure for this is action, action, action. Even if it's small, give it all you got until you still rank and then you'll see some momentum. And your team will grow faster and faster right after that. Okay, so if you are thinking about Diamond Club, um, hit momentum at silver and you'll see. you see some amazing changes and you'll be convinced that this is a great opportunity. So line number eight is no one supports me, so I can't go as fast as so-and-so, so-and-so. Jade's husband is so supportive or so-and-so is whatever. Guess what? It wasn't always like that. Um, you know, and it doesn't matter because even if you have a wonderful supportive husband, sometimes you have other problems. Okay, everybody has their a fair share of problems. Okay, so we can focus on our problems and grow those problems, or we can focus on good stuff, like the parable of the wolves, you know, the Native American parables parable. They, you know, which which wolf um, one? It's you know, is it the the positive one or the negative one? It doesn't matter. It's whichever one you feed. So if you feed the negative guy, you know, he's going to win. He's going to grow bigger and, and the other guy is weak. Um, so that's what uh, this is about. Um, okay, so the root problem is pride, again. Um, comparison, competition, low self-worth, um, low self-love, um, and scarcity, fear, thinking, and feelings. And then feeling alone, when you don't have to be alone. Um, I felt alone a lot uh, because I didn't know anybody, uh, you know, where I was in Ohio that was doing this. And I thought, oh, I have no team, I have nothing, um, no one support me, things like that. And after a while, I thought, how rude. You know, God has given me this. So um, talk to him and he will tell me how to do it. And so I did. <laughs> and I stopped feeling alone, stopped feeling sorry for myself. And I found success. So... Um, you know, if you're in this situation, that's the solution. So here we are. Develop more self-love. Believe that you have the power to do all things with God's help. Faith is about action, even though you don't have the support. Just do something. Work at your own pace. Okay. Don't worry about those people that are hitting rank every month. It doesn't matter. Work at your own pace, but still you're working and making sure that you're not making excuses for yourself. Okay. Ask others for support. Um, and tell them your whys, your goals, all right? Don't be afraid of that. Um, when you allow yourself to be vulnerable, hey, I'm going to hit silver, I want to hit silver, I want to hit diamond or whatever it is, by this time, share with people, all right? They're not going to laugh um, if they're your true friends and uh, you just keep working at it, all right? Learn all that you can and reach um, out to your upline. So send... Um, or step out of your comfort zone and find an accountability partner or a mentor. Um, have a positive outlook. will help you see solutions. Of course, you can go cross-line, make friends cross-line. That means they're not on directly above or under you. They're across. Um, smell cilantro oil, guys, um, and you know, help you detach from your uh, for success because sometimes we don't allow ourselves to be happy until we reach a certain level. And guess what? If you re reach that happiness right now, you'll reach that success level. So, um, so most people blame their spouse for not supporting or blame their children. There's, you know, there's too much to do. The, the kids are crazy or whatever it is. Um, if you are like that, please drink fennel and just take responsibility for your choices and feelings. So sometimes you just have to hand things over to God and say, hey, take care of this. I'm going to do my calling. And um, I'm sure things will work out, and it does. Okay, as again, I, I know I must have said it ten times, but connect to God. You're not alone. Okay, and um, wherever you focus your energy, the energy will flow. Um, right there. Okay, so that is um, number eight. Okay, and that is you know the excuse of no one supports me, so I can't do this as compared to so and so. So number nine lie is I work hard, but nothing happens. I don't know why. Um, so the root problem is pride. 
and not working smart and lack of understanding of business and time management perhaps and lots of blaming okay so of course humility reach up to your upline um, you know you, there must be something that you're not doing or you know if you continue doing the wrong things and you're expecting a different result um, leverage others so you know reach out to your teammates and help them be leaders too um, so you're not doing it all alone um, so be brave and try something different um, because maybe what you're doing is not uh, helping you succeed so you know try something else um, like us, we thought, okay, well, these people are not coming to classes. We'll make videos. Um, we'll make podcasts, things like that, okay? So you can figure out ways to help people on your team. Okay, so, you know, I have people selling me all the time, oh, Jade, I try to reach out for so-and-so and she, she won't answer. There's a way. There's a way, you know, either that or keep talking to new people. Don't just wait on just that one person, Okay. Uh, review your beliefs, your mindset, and invest in personal development books, such as The Slight Edge. Don't just higgledy piggledy going, I just listen to podcasts every week. Guys, just plan this out a little bit. You've got, you've got some leaders that have great books to suggest for you. Ask them and get those books, okay? So get some direction. All right, so you can hear great happy things, happy thoughts, but it's not really um, pertaining to your particular need. So um, ask all right, and you will get solutions. Um, so I see, understand that business takes a few years to get up and running. So if you're making progress, sometimes you don't realize it unless you are recording. So take pieces of paper out, um, record things online, whatever it is that you need to do, but um, record and track your progress. Okay, and go back to basics, go through the checklist, make sure you're doing the, few, you know, the important things and retrain yourself. Um, do one-on-one -on -one training to realign um, your thoughts and, you know, wait, wait, what are you not doing? What are you um, forgetting? Okay, so that is solutions for that problem. Okay, so the last excuse here, there's more excuses <laughs> or lies that we tell ourselves, but these are the, some of the popular ones. And the last one is, the oils and products don't always work for me, so I can't tell something, tell, sell something that I don't believe in. Now, this is a person that wants to grow the business, okay? And they're telling you that they're unsuccessful, I guess it's not working for them because of this reason. And so the root problem for these people is perhaps a not understanding overall holistic approach. And of course it's pride and it's fear of rejection. It's not using the products, not using it frequently enough or um, not understanding how the body feels. Okay, and so here are some possible solutions. So you need to believe that oils work. Okay, and you need to look for it and see that. Okay, sometimes people decide that it doesn't work and so they, can't, they don't see anything. Um, so perhaps you just need to try different oils for different things, try different combinations of the synergistic power of oils work better um, and do some research. There's lots of research. And for me, I had to do my own research. I don't just take everybody any, anybody's word for it. And then when I have the research, I have to think about it. And go, Does that make sense? Do they do proper research? Um, and try to understand the underlying reasons for certain health issues. Okay, so when you do understand it, you take care of the system, the body system. Okay, um, and use the products. Sometimes we just don't use it, and of course it doesn't work. Um, and um, use it more frequently, perhaps. And just take your full responsibility for your health. Sometimes we, we forget and we give the um, responsibility of our health to doctors and other professionals. And then of course we, we step back and be very passive and say, okay, it doesn't work. Um, so understand that health is a holistic lifestyle approach that whatever we eat, drink, and how we move, how we rest, and how our brain thinks in our belief systems and our feelings, all that plays into our health. Okay, so if we understand that perhaps um, that excuse or that lie that we tell ourselves, it's, you know, we can overcome them. Okay, so here we are to the, towards the end. Okay, this is an important um, so here's some action uh, steps class. So take actions to increase confidence with experience. So action, action, actions, guys. Uh, um, you you learn as you go, basically. You can keep learning and learning and hide behind the excuse of not knowing enough and, you know, you will always be in your own way, 
Okay, so the best way to truly learn is just to take action. I have known several, so many humble people that that helps me be more humble, that helps me more be a better person because they, they know they don't know and they learn something and they apply it and they share it right away and they go out and they just share it. Even though they don't have all the answers and then they have more questions than answers, they come back with questions and they go out again. And I honor those people. And that's why some of those people are very successful. And um, they deserve all the success in the world. So remember, fear overcomes faith. Faith is an action word. So let's take action. All right. So some of these actions for you guys. Pack your doTERRA bag. Okay, if you don't have a doTERRA bag that you packed, let's do it. Okay. This is the bag. Classes and promote them. The bag you book class every class. Thursday night, but not like promote them. Class. Right? Of course, no one's going to come. I promise you that God will help you bring people to your class if you keep sharing and opening your mouth and just telling people, I have classes every week and this is my my calling. This is what I do. Um, you know, I wanted to share, uh, help you it, reintroduce this come. lost art <laughs> and help um, make create awareness in the community. Because healthy families into a healthy community. Okay? Something like that. Just go out and do something. Okay, guys? Um, and your people will know who you are, what you're doing. Pack samples. Put samples in your bag. Do you have samples already in your bag? If not, then do it. And magic will happen. You'll be able to start sharing with people. Because other humans are, need, are you know, really looking for solutions, need this, um, what we have. Okay, get some business cards. And don't spend all your time making a perfect business card and spending three months doing it. Okay, just, just get it done. You just need the, the information. Sometimes in the back of a business card, there's some information on oils. I have pictures of oils and what they do. So people have a quick idea of what you do and then stimulate some conversation. Okay, make flyers. Okay, you plan those classes out. Even though you don't have people coming yet, plan them out. Put them on the calendar. Tell your family about that. Tell your friends. Okay, and then things will start rolling, I promise. Okay, um, number six is contact friends from your prospect list. Yes, you might have a list of 50 people, 100 people. Um, but go ahead and contact each one of them. Okay, and things will happen. Um, number seven is talk to two people a day about oils. So even online, even face-to-face. You know, -face. If you're scared of face-to-face, -to -face, then do it first. Mm -hmm. If you're scared of calling people on the phone, which is what I was scared about, call people. Okay, and then you get over it. Um, track your progress, like I said, be accountable to somebody and the list goes on. But some of these things are very practical, just do it now and you see that things will shift in your business faster than you expect. All right, guys, so I just want to conclude. Take action, all right, that's one very important way to overcome your fears and um, help you get out of your own way. So love yourself because you're strong enough um, to withstand any challenge that you've been given with God's help. Okay, so that's all. Thank you for joining me and have a good evening. Bye. Thank you, Jay. Bye. <laughs> okay. Um, thank you, everybody, for um, participating, for listening or, or watching this. Now, I um, apologize. It went a little bit longer than uh, most of our training um, goes. Um, she packed a lot into here and a lot of good ideas. It's all there on the website, um, some downloads and everything. So um, any questions or any, anything you want to add saying you're, you're here? No, no, just a question. I, I, honestly, I took about seven pages of notes. <laughs> it's really good. To, um, so it's, it's good to catch up and learn more on um, uh, the business. Um, for this Saturday business training, um, obviously, I can invite other people to join too, isn't it? This is open to everybody in the world. Yeah. So the link is right there on our public website, and um, anybody is open. We have people that are not cool. on our team um, join. This week is a little bit unusual. Jade's not here, um, and she's actually done a lot of training with the people in Ohio, so we don't have any of those people here. Um, you're here um, from our team in Australia. Um, we do uh, sometimes have other people from the team in Australia. Always. Mm best time and we have this on friday night so it co corresponds with saturday um, for the team in australia but everybody yeah. is welcome to join they don't have to be part of the team they don't even have to be a doTERRA member um, to, to join this all oh. of the 
in the same podcast along with the um, essential oils, the wellness and the business. So it all comes in the same podcast. So yeah. for who are not interested in the business and they're listening to the podcast, they would just skip over the business portions. Yeah. But sometimes they're inspirational as well. We yeah. do have a lot of people attending the Tuesday night or it would be your Wednesday afternoon classes. You could probably see from the videos. Um, those are a lot of um, a lot of the leaders and sharers as well, um, and you know this is for people who are very serious about the business, yeah. doing the business. And so, we're yeah, to having this, whether people are here or not, um, it's it's great, and we know there are a lot of people that are listening to the podcast. So, yeah, yeah, well, that's good. It's good to catch up. All right. I'm just going to yeah. end the recording here. Thank you, everybody, for listening, and um, we look forward to talking to you again.